The past season of Grey's Anatomy left us in chaos, Teddy lying on their floor without a pulse. Lucas and Simone opened a lovely bag of bones. Sam Sutton was flatlining. Quan rejected Maxine's DNI order. Jules was proclaiming her hate, love for him. Meredith was destroying her job and restarting her love life. And season 20 begins in pandemonium. You know what? Chaos suits such a historic occasion. 20 Grey's Anatomy seasons. Two decades. The amount of time I and many of you have spent on this TV program is terrible, yet I regret nothing. I get teary thinking about how long we've been on this trip with these characters. Chaos has been Grey's Anatomy's trademark for 20 seasons, with ferry boat disasters, electrocutions, lift leg chops and musical episodes. After a lengthy respite, throwing us into turmoil seems appropriate, good, and honest. Feels like home. After the incident, everyone who was in Boston for the Catherine Fox Awards, including Meredith I left Seattle Grey, is at Grey Sloan assessing the damage. Everyone is frightened and yelling, but our five baby surgeons turn on each other when Nick Marsh asks for an explanation. I know Quan likes being a jerk, but is he that upset over Simone leaving her wedding for Lucas? Called Lucas a homewrecker. I can't believe Quan isn't face punched more. Naturally, these five are angry at one another because they dread Teddy dying after watching Sam Sutton die and losing their employment. Nick threatens them with the latter but flees and instructs them to stay put. No one is practicing medicine until further review. Most instantly disobey that command. Like old days, Lucas wants oxygen after inhabiting Simone and Sam Sutton in hours. Simone follows him outside to discuss both issues with him. They get into an emergency before getting into the erotic or nasty aspects. A motor vehicle collision victim is fading in the back of their ambulance, and the engine is dead. They need aid keeping him alive and transporting him to the ER. As the two paramedics leave the rig to allow the physicians operate on the patient before transporting him, a vehicle hits the ambulance's rear, trapping Lucas and Simone inside with the victim. The self-driving car is malfunctioning, and Wayne, the beta tester, is imprisoned in the back as it repeatedly hits the ambulance. Nobody can stop it. After Catherine Fox hauled her across the nation, Meredith roams Gray Sloan. Catherine wants to scream at her for telling Fox Foundation donors that everyone has been mistaken about Alzheimer's for decades and making them seem like fools. Meredith can cease discussing her theories or Catherine can cut off her lab funding. That's all she tells her. Catherine, it could have been done over Zoom. I know she's upset. Mer can listen to Nick moan about the intern's mess and panic about having to dismiss one or all of them, and aid Bailey when he pulls her away and informs her the interns are in trouble again. Meredith and Bailey tag team to teach the interns stranded in the ambulance how to care their dying patient in numerous great sequences. Watching these two work together always warms my heart, and they seem to love it too. The ambulance is less comfortable. Since Lucas and Simone's symptoms indicate that the victim is bleeding inside, Mer and Bailey urge their interns to do an X-lap alone. To stop the bleeding, they'll have to open up that guy's abdomen at the rear of the trailer being repeatedly hit by a car. Chaos rules. Simone is naturally cautious following the Sam Sutton incident and asks for another approach. Couldn't they feed him fluids to survive till they left? Maybe. But if he's as terrible as he appears, he'll die if they don't cut him open. Lucas and Simone must decide as they are the only ones watching the patient. Lucas urges them to try. Simone exclaims, I can't have another death on my hands because of you. Though harsh, it's not the ideal approach to start a relationship. Lucas cuts with the scalpel. The bleeding is dangerous at first, but they manage it. Lucas chose well. Quan realizes they can damage the driverless car's tire to halt it. Thankfully, dear friends, I laughed often. That many physicians, EMTs, and a vehicle manufacturer employee were sitting around. Yet no one suggested removing the tires. I realize folks were busy, but come on. Meredith and Bailey transport the sufferer to the ore, where he recovers. More significantly, they had a sweet conversation regarding Meredith's intern class. Bailey informs her old pupil that her intern class cut LVADs and sabotaged clinical studies too. And look at me now, Meredith says. This pleasant walk down memory lane reminds Meredith that her brilliant intern teacher made her a genius surgeon. Mer remembers that when she sees Nick again, he says he's unhappy with the interns for disobeying the rules because if it continues, he won't feel good leaving Seattle to live with Meredith in Boston. He can't abandon them idiots. Meredith suddenly gets an idea that might cure several problems. Nobody performs this work alone. First, Meredith tells Catherine she's fine with stopping her study to maintain her money. Why Catherine isn't more suspicious is beyond me. Meredith quickly gives her information to Amelia, who now believes that brain plaque may not be the sole cause of Alzheimer's. Meredith wants Amelia to investigate for her in Seattle since she can't in Boston. Amelia seems on board. A decent project to keep her busy this season was needed. Nick enters to complete his conversation with the interns. He tells them no one will be dismissed despite the five's antics. He is leaving. His move to Boston is due to Meredith's help in finding a residency program director. Equally are more capable than him. Miranda Bailey, pals. She enters and says, I have five rules, and credits roll. I've never felt so lively. In season 20, Miranda Bailey's five guidelines are dictating interns' behavior. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.